Welcome to the Jericho Force Podcast, where we learn how to integrate faith into the work that we do. Don't conform to the world's way of doing business. Transform by doing business God's way. Here's our host, my husband, author, speaker, teacher, encourager, and stewardship coach, Jason Davis. What is going on, everybody? What is going on? My name is Jason Davis, and I am the host of the Jericho Force podcast. And on this podcast, we talk about how we live out our faith in the marketplace, how we integrate faith into the work that we do. They call me Mr. Fortify. And today we've got an awesome guest. She's a good friend of mine. But before we bring her on, let me introduce her to you. Tip Levette is a kind and warm soul filled with wisdom and knowledge. This outgoing Atlanta native worked for over a decade as a scientist in the healthcare industry before transitioning into entertainment and entrepreneurship. It is through those mediums that she now entertains and educates, inspires and informs by sharing her faith, appreciation of plant-based foods, and financial savvy. In her presence, you'll learn and laugh as you listen to her journey and inevitably reflect upon your own. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Jericho Force podcast, Tip Levette. Tip, what's going on? Hi, Jason. How are you? Thank you for having me. Absolutely. I'm already excited, Tip. You already know what it is when we get together and and (laughs) chat, whether we're having Bible conversations or just talking about life. So I'm really excited to have you on today. Listen, I already know this is going to be an after party to the after party. (laughs) (laughs) Absolutely. Well, Tip, I know that I know your background and obviously you've lived your background, but there's a lot of things as people hear your bio, that's, that's pretty accomplished. And you have, God has allowed you to move in multiple domains, not just previously, but even currently and even into things that he's calling you into the future. So just talk about people, talk to people, talk to us, talk to the listeners. How did you get to this point? Today, there's there's scientists, and I feel like to, a lot of people can't say that they know a scientist, but I can because I do. <laughs> now, you said talk about that because there's scientists, and then there's healthcare, and then you got entertainment, entrepreneurship, and I'm sure people's heads are spinning in a positive direction, but they're wondering, Tip, how? So, <laughs> Tip, enlighten us on your professional background and, and how you even – got into all those different industries. Yeah. Um, so clearly based on, you know, how we started here with my introduction, I am a multi hyphenate, which means I am talented in multiple industries, um, and across multiple genres, even within one industry. Um, and I would say to people who are multi hyphenate, multi, multi talented, multi passionate, um, I focused on one thing at a time. I actually didn't try to do all the things. Now, there may have always been a passion for all the things. There may have always been um, a innate talent or interest in all the things, but I didn't try to do them all at once. I took them one at a time, and then they kind of unfolded through, I guess, like prayer and just really being intuitive with what the next step was. And then as I added something else on, I kept what I already had until the proper time to release it, or I just did it in a different way. So for example, something may have like the corporate job working as a scientist in the lab where it once may have been 80% of my time and maybe the entertainment with acting, singing and dancing may have been 20%. Well, then at some point in my life, depending on what the season was, the percentages shifted. So then maybe I was just doing corporate 30% and I was doing entertainment 70%. So there's always a way to do it, but it's being intuitive and it's taking one step at a time and knowing what season you're in. I love that tip. Now tip you see folks, 
She said multi-hyphenate, multi-passionate, multi-talented. The wisdom <laughs> is already oozing. <laughs> So I, I thank you for that description. Tip. And you mentioned a few things there. You didn't do it all at once. They also unfolded as you went, and that was being very intentional in listening to God and then positioning yourself for those moves. And Tip, I know previously in other forms where we've uh, taught uh, together, especially within Kingdom Business Network and some other forms, you talk about waiting upon the Lord. And waiting upon the Lord is not sitting still. So can you talk about what waiting upon the Lord means? And then how did that play a factor into the advice you just gave? You didn't do everything at once. Some things unfolded. And then once you started something new, you maintained it, but then at the proper time, you moved into the next thing. And I feel like as, you, as somebody progresses through those steps, there's this ebb and flow. Like you might be going 75 miles an hour, and then it, you might be going more like 25 miles an hour. So just touch on that a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. And I love how you just articulated the ebbs and flow because that's really what it is. I often pray and ask God that I am always in his pace of grace, right? But understanding that a pace can change and it can change quickly. So in some seasons, you're right. Absolutely. I may be running and I, I am doing a lot of um, a lot of the things at once or seemingly so. And people are like, how are you doing this? How are you juggling this? And then other times it's seemingly quiet. I may be in a rest period and it looks like I'm not doing anything. Um, but for me in particular, uh, specifically as it relates to the waiting. So I've always been talented in the arts, but growing up in the type of family background that I did, that wasn't necessarily encouraged. You know, I was encouraged to go the traditional route like most of us are. You know, you get the uh, the degree, you get the corporate America job, climb the ladder, you know, make some money, get married, have kids, and then you retire. And hopefully there's still a life to live afterwards. Um, but that's just not <laughs> something that always resonated with me. So I waited a long time before taking that leap of faith into what I felt was my calling and my purpose. But during that time, I still did the necessary work. I still made necessary steps. And so what do I mean by that? What people have to understand is that waiting is a verb. It's not necessarily passive, it is active. So while I was waiting for the right moment, for the right timing to take that leap of faith into entertainment, I did things like um, becoming debt free. Now I had never came from a family where that was talked about as even being a possibility. So I had to learn. So while I was at my corporate job and my off time, I was reading books about money. You know, I learned about finances. I started doing the steps to become debt free. Now, then that shifted the paradigm for me um, where I was able to then transition from corporate into entertainment a little bit more smoothly than some of my other um, creatives. So that's kind of what I mean by by the waiting. You have to find the necessary work that's going to lead you to be prepared and properly positioned for that very thing that you're waiting on. Mm, that's good tip. And tip, as you often do, what, what you all don't realize is tip often sparks my thought process. And what just came to me, tip, as you were describing that the concept that waiting is a verb. And, and I hope the listeners, if you're listening to this live or, or when you go listen on demand, heed the words that tip is saying, waiting is a verb. And so what came to me as you were talking, tip, is positioning. And Three of them, three types of positioning, in fact, financial positioning, intellectual positioning, and spiritual positioning. You took time out to gather your finances because I know you're big on stewardship as I am. So if you're somebody out there who is multi-talented and multi-passionate, then having a strong financial position is going to be key. And so that's huge. And that's a financial position, the intellectual positioning tip. I know that you're an avid reader and studier and take classes and courses. And so that's part of positioning as well as what am I actively learning? What am I growing in? And then thirdly, 
and certainly not least, it's the foundational piece. And that's a spiritual positioning because Tip, in your walk, you understood, hey, yes, we wait upon the Lord, but in our waiting, we position ourselves. You know, God controls the outcome. Well, we control what's within our control is choices, uh, attitude, things like that. So I love it, Tip. You're already sparking me as you normally do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I just want to uh, make a comment with that, with the three um, positions of waiting that you just talked about. Because in order for me to have the proper discipline, consistency, and fortitude to even go after being financially savvy, to put myself in a better position to make the transition that I knew I wanted to make, I first had to get disciplined in my faith walk. That's where it all started. So while I was working the corporate jobs and I was going through some extreme times, I was actually dealing with workplace bullying. Um, it was in that time that I got with a, a ministry where I did a deep dive into my spiritual walk and to my relationship with God. And it was there that I learned what discipline was. It was through those moments that I was able to practice submission. And then that, what you know, I like to call transferable skills, I was able to then begin to apply that to other aspects of my life. So it really was the spiritual first, then came the financial discipline, and then that spilled over into, you know, what I do now with the health coaching into changing my dietary lifestyle. So really, once you get that discipline and consistency in your faith walk, you can apply it to any aspect of life. And so again, that's what I was doing during the waiting. That's huge, Tip. I love it. And you said a couple of things, and this is where I'd like to, to take us, because you were kind of starting to get into your testimony there. So with you being in the health space and also in the working in the arts, we know that life doesn't come without trials and you were just starting to touch on some of that. So Tip, what role did your testimony play in the different transitions that you had throughout your career? I would say that it, it always catapulted me into my next, but not before it prepared me for my next. Mm -hmm. um, and so what I meant by that was when I was at one particular laboratory job, like I said, I was dealing with workplace bullying. And if any of you guys have heard me on some of my other platforms, you may know the story, but it got to the point where my basic human rights were infringed. So I went and got a lawyer. Um, we were coming upon what looked like in my mind was gonna be a legal battle. And so as a legal strategy, the lawyer sent me to the doctor and said, you know, let them know that you're stressed out over this. You may be able to get a doctor note and they can give you some time off that can give you some time to, you know, regroup, get yourself together and think through your next steps. Well, through that, I actually got diagnosed with an autoimmune disease, more specifically lupus. Um, and they also found um, a mass on my uterus. They tested it for cancer. Thank God it was benign, but I was diagnosed with fibroids. So all the while, while I'm dealing with workplace bullying, I get diagnosed with an autoimmune disease that is potentially life-threatening. And then I also get diagnosed with this gynecological disease that's also just as serious. And so I felt like my whole life was really just falling apart all in one foul swoop. But instead of turning to other things, like some people do to kind of cope or as an um, escapism type mechanism, that's really when I cleaned into God, right? Because I had nothing else at this point. You know, again, I had been raised in a family and I had been taught that if you just keep your head down and keep working and you show up on time and, you know, you check all the boxes that you're supposed to do, you know, you graduate with good grades and get this corporate job and the whole world will just open up to you. And that wasn't my story. So I knew there had to be something else to the story. Um, so I chose God. I clung to God. I started working deeper in my spiritual disciplines. Um, and then from there, I was released and I was released into my next job where I was blessed to have a trainer who was also Christian, a woman of faith. And she started speaking to me about money and my finances. And so that's when I, I followed through with the proper steps. I read the book that she gave me. And then from there, that's when it was like, well, now that you're financially stable, you can actually go write that other chapter in your story. You can go see what maybe your parents and grandparents didn't get to see. They gave you what, what they knew, but now you can go find out something else because you have resources that they didn't have. So what are you going to do with them? And so that's what I did. You know, Zig Ziglar has this quote where he says, 
go as far as you can see and then you can see further. Well, I felt like I had gone as far as my parents could see. So now I was able to see further for what Tip wanted to see. And so then from there, I took the leap of faith and I quit my job and um, I started moving on into um, entertainment. And from there, you know, I had a pretty good run. I did a couple of local shows in Atlanta. I was able to start traveling with a theater production um, out of Atlanta. We sold out in Atlanta and then we moved on to other cities in the U.S. And then from there, just kind of like when the pandemic hit, I did the pandemic pivot and um, I started going into more of my entrepreneurial endeavors within my business as an actress. Um, and then, yeah, I began to share some of those skills that I had picked up along the way in the wilderness, right? Like I didn't lose what I learned when I clung to God during those times. I didn't lose the skill set that I had learned about money when I needed to get out of debt because I was trying to chase my dreams. I didn't lose what I had learned when I had to change my dietary eating habits, right? Because of those health concerns. So now when the whole world was in the holy pause, it was like, well, Tip, you've got other skills. Teach people what you learned along the way. You know, I may not be, you know, some ex, I don't know, the biggest voice out there right now, but I have had some measure of success. And that's what I choose to tell people because you can at least take one step towards what you want and it can be the step to change your life. So I, I hope I kind of answered your question there. <laughs> Absolutely, Tip. You were you were preaching, and I almost felt inclined to virtually throw something. <laughs> so I love it. Here's some of the things I took away from what you were saying, Tip. And and listeners, pay attention to the wisdom. That that's not just something that was in Tip's bio. Wisdom rolls off of her because she abides in God. And James, the book of James, tells us if any man lacks wisdom. Let him ask, and God will give it freely. He gives it liberally without reproach. And that's one thing, knowing to personally and then also seeing the fruit in her life. She asked God for wisdom. So, Tip, in your process, when the world threw uh, trials at you in the form of bullying, when uh, sickness tried to come upon you, you developed a deep dependency on God. You leaned into the spiritual disciplines, which we'll come back to that in a second, because some people are like spiritual disciplines, like they have a small idea of what it is, or maybe they don't know. So we'll enlighten. We won't go through all of them. So, you know, that's a conversation for <laughs> right? you talked about the role of mentorship. When people come alongside of you, what that does, we know in the book of Proverbs, it, it says that iron sharpens iron. And it's huge. And then lastly, with everything that you went through in your career transitions, as well as things you learned along the way, you developed and sharpened skill sets and skills when our mind, when we open up our mind to not focus on the negative, but the positive, there are skill sets that you did use that you currently use and that you will use that are shareable and teachable. And so I got all of that from you too. My goodness. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you for being such a good listener. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, I kind of have to be a little bit, but, <laughs> but to, there's something key in there. You, you talked about the spiritual disciplines and, and we know, or maybe some of us don't know, it has to do with the maturation process as we grow in Christ. But to, in particular, when you were developing a deeper dependency on God, what was maybe one or two of the spiritual disciplines that, uh, that you practiced, that you sat with and really uh, asked God to show you more of himself in? Um, so I practice seven of the classical spiritual disciplines of the Christian faith. And although they all, you know, have value and they have their, their moments where they will carry you through, you know, some hardships and some trials, I will say I am finding that outside of, you know, prayer and fasting are the two that are most talked about in a traditional church setting. But the one that I will find is has to be like the most powerful one that probably gets the least amount 
of attention would be solitude. And, you know, I know a lot of people get that confused with meditation. And meditation is also a spiritual discipline, but they are different. Meditation is when you are literally um, still meditating on something. Your brain is still active. You are still engaging in some type of thoughts. And hopefully, you know, as the Bible tells us, you should be meditating on the word. But solitude is different. Solitude is where you quiet your mind. You still those thoughts and it's literally just silence. You are literally making room for God to speak. And in this culture, especially here in America, where we live, this go, 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 grind, 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 sleep when you die type of culture, that is so difficult for people to do. And in fact, during that time, what actually, in addition to what I've already shared, I went through a really bad like like heartbreak because I had broken up with um, a guy that I was dating for a long time. And that really, really hurt me. Like, deeply. And some of the advice that I was given during this time, whether it was with the breakup, whether it was with the health issues, whether it was with the bullying on the job, was just keep busy, right? Just keep going. Just try to like, you know, always be doing something so you don't think about it. But no, I chose to do something that's countercultural. I chose to sit still. And again, wait, there's that waiting. But again, waiting is a verb. I sat and waited for God to speak. I sat and waited for God to tell me what to do, how to heal, what actions did I need to take. Um, and I would say solitude would be the, the discipline that I would say is the most powerful. Um, and I would encourage everyone to try that. And again, I know it's countercultural, but when you stop thinking and when you stop moving, you make room and space for God to do the thinking for you and to move on your behalf. That's huge too. And thank you for that description. And, and for our listeners, just so you know, ladies and gentlemen, well, what Tip is referring to, she's not talking about striving or any sort of thing legalistic. The spiritual disciplines have to do with maturation. It's maturing. When you accept Christ into your life, that's salvation. And I want you to keep in mind a tree metaphor, right? So Jesus comes into your heart and he does the finished work that he did at the cross. And in Romans 10, 9, if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus Christ was raised from, raised from the dead, then you will be saved. So Jesus, you're not saved as a result of what you do. You're saved because of what Christ did. And salvation is the inflection point. But then, like a tree that starts out, that seed, seeds grow into trees. So we don't sit on the sidelines after we receive Jesus. We go through the, the process of, of growing and maturing, allowing God to move more deeply within us. And that's what Tip is touching on with the spiritual disciplines. And like you, uh, Tip, the spiritual discipline of solitude, God speaks to me often with that. And just for some practicality around that as well, folks, it's it could be something like going on a retreat, going out to a camping ground, going off on a nature walk by yourself. And I do the walking version personally. And it's something about when you just hear nature and you hear the birds chirping and the wind is blowing uh, amongst your face. And I tend to hear from the Lord significantly more when it's away from the noise and the music and, and just the day to day. So, so Tip, I appreciate you touching on solitude there. That that's huge. That is huge. Absolutely. And thank you for uh, giving them some tangible examples. Cause yes, I am all about practicality because sometimes, you know, we can listen to various podcasts, webinars, clubhouse rooms, church sermons, motivational speeches, and you get all fired up and inspired, but then it's like, okay, but then what? Or that sounds yeah. great. Or, you know, especially if it's a church sermon on a Sunday, you, you you know, that sounds great and all holy and sanctified, but it's like, yeah, but what do I do with it? What does it tangibly look like in my life? And so I'm happy that you broke that down for people because yeah, I, anybody who meets me or talks to me, I want you to walk away with some type of action step, something that you can implement in the moment. You know what I mean? So yeah, otherwise it, the words are just pretty, you know, but yeah. they, they don't have any impact on you. I agree. See folks, I told, I told you Tip was going to, she gets me fired up. So I can't imagine people who are listening live <laughs> on demand 
Tip, I'm already fired up. Well, well, Tip, you said in your bio, and I know personally, you're a person of wisdom, and we talked about you being multi-talented and multi-passionate. Well, Tip, with you transitioning into the health space, health coaching, what are some tips that we can follow, especially, you know, a lot of folks have been through a lot the last 18 to 20 months with the pandemic. And so well, what are just some good general uh, health tips that you can give to people to, to be in good health? Yeah, well, first and foremost, I just want to say to anyone out there that has been, you know, affected by this pandemic in a more severe way than maybe some others, if you experience whether it was direct or indirect hardship, uh, physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, financially, um, just take heart, you know? Um, the first thing I would say is give yourself grace, number one, right? We're all in something that we have never seen before. We didn't know how long it would last. We're still learning, you know, because um, I still have colleagues that are in the labs and in the healthcare space, and, you know, we talk. Everybody's still learning what this looks like and how to deal with it. So give yourself grace is what I would say. Um, and then I would also say from there, definitely mindset is number one, right? Because a lot of times when people come to me, whether it's, you know, about financial um, issues that they may be having and they may need help with like debt-free strategies or things like that, or they have some type of, you know, health things that they want to either overcome or health goals that they want to accomplish. I first have to deal with the mindset, you know, and especially when you're dealing with high achievers, it's so easy to want to attack the thing head on. But again, like I said, before I ever became debt free, before I ever, you know, switched my diet and was able to be cured of lupus and things like that, I dipped into the spiritual side. Why? Because that's how I fortified my mindset. That's how I strengthened my emotional stability. That's what gave me the stamina to be disciplined. Anybody can give you a spreadsheet with a budget template. Anybody can give you a 14-day meal plan or, you know, a green juice fast or whatever. But if you don't have the proper mindset, you're not going to stick with it. And also, that's going to help you when, you know, you get to the hard times emotionally with some of what we're going on. So I would say protect your mind. Now, what does that look like? So me personally, I actually stopped watching the news. Now, I wouldn't say that, you know, to the point of being ignorant, I watched just enough to stay informed and to stay vigilant, but I did not obsess over it. You know what I mean? To the point where it would allow fear or doubt or, you know, anxiety or anything like that. So protect your ear and eye gate. If you know those are triggers for you, some of the images that's going on right now, because not just with the pandemic, but let's be clear, you know, we had other issues going on with racial injustices and things like that then limit that, protect your mental and emotional. That's going to be number one. Now, what that's going to do, that's going to set the foundation to allow things like getting good rest and eating healthier to actually be 100% more functional. Because stress, you know, is just going to be counterproductive to anything you're doing in the physical anyway. So that's why the very, very first thing and most important thing you can do is protect your mental at all costs. So if that means, like Jason said, going on a nature walk, going on a, a spiritual retreat, or maybe a writer's retreat. I know we have a lot of creatives, you know, that listen to this podcast. Um, if maybe you need to feel like uh, develop a full on self care routine, whatever it is that you need to fill your cup, because we all know you can't pour from an empty cup. So that's one takeaway that I would like to, you know, task all the, the listeners with right now, whether you're listening to this live or you circle back around to this on the replay, is ask yourself, what do I need to fill my cup in this season? Sit with the Holy Spirit, sit with yourself, sit in solitude, which is silence, and figure out the answers to that. Now, some practical things you can do on the physical side, exercising is going to do wonders. Even if you know, you don't have to do anything strenuous or go out and get a gym membership. Those things are great. If you want a personal trainer, by all means, we all need accountability and support with things that we're doing in our lives. But even if you just go outside and enjoy the sunshine, a 10 to 20 minute walk daily does wonders for your body. Also, I mentioned earlier, you want to get enough rest. Then no matter what your dietary lifestyle, I personally am whole food plant based or vegan is what, you know, most people understand it to be as, although they are two different things, but I won't get into that right now. Um, increase fruits and vegetables. 
It doesn't matter. I don't care if you're paleo, if you're alkaline, if you're keto, if you're just a regular, you know, just eating the standard American diet. Increasing fruits and vegetables to boost your immunity right now is going to be so vital for everyone, especially with what we're going on, um, what we're seeing that's going on right now. If you want to start increasing certain superfoods that you may need, start taking extra supplements. You know, if you've gone to the doctor lately, I recommend everyone getting a full blood workup and just seeing where you might have some mineral deficiencies or some vitamin deficiencies. And then focus on, first and foremost, I would tell you fruits and vegetables that would provide you with that. So let's say your vitamin B is low. Find the foods that that you can begin to ingest more of that will, um, you know, increase those numbers for you or outside of taking the supplements. So that would be what I would say. To recap is number one, give yourself grace. Number two, your mental, um, just protecting your mental is going to just do wonders. Number three, exercising. Number four, getting enough sleep. Number five, increasing the amount of fruits and vegetables that you um, digest, no matter what your dietary um, preference is right now. That's what I would tell everyone. So tip number one, amen. Number two, yes, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> Did you all hear how emphatic she was? She went straight into coach mode. This is why you all need to make sure we'll, we'll get her contact info later. This is why you need to stay connected to what Tip is doing in the lives of people. God moving through her in the marketplace. I love it, Tip. Grace. And then I just had three general buckets. Grace mental and physical to encompass that. And I love how you really started with, with grace because so many people struggle with giving themselves grace. That's, that's a hurdle for many people. And then number two, because of the lack of giving grace, then there are mental battles. And I love, and, and by the way, Tip, I don't know if you were priming me on purpose, you said fortify. I knew you would catch it. <laughs> you said fortify your mindset. You all know how I feel about that word. That's my word right there. I am Mr. Fortify, by the way. So fortify your mindset. And you reminded me of Romans 12 too, which is like our flagship scripture tip. We just, I just put a little remix business spin on it, but be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And that starts, that's a spiritual mind renewal that the apostle paul is talking about there and we know the fruit of that when you do that when you have spiritual mind renewal it it, it crosses over to the other areas of your life and i love the advice you said protect your mind at all cost i think about i don't know why it's what came to mind was a bouncer at a party or at a club and you're in vip and right before you go back into the VIP, you tell the bodyguard, look, nobody gets in, nobody gets out without my permission. And that, that bouncer just says, look, you're nobody in, nobody out, period. We've got to be that stringent about Absolutely. protecting our mind. And I love how you just painted that picture for us, our ear gates and our eye gates, my God, especially the days that we're living in and, and, and things going on in the media and the news. We need some good news. Thank God for the gospel, which is the good news. It's the ultimate good news. So we thank God for that. And then the physical part, tip, going to the gym, getting a personal trainer. Uh, how underrated is walking? Tip, my goodness, getting sunshine, you know, walking for 20 30 minutes, rest, increasing fruits and vegetables. You know, Tip, there's some people out there, they go, ah, well, Tip, I know that they're good for me, but I don't <laughs> want to eat all the fruits and vegetables. Well, you folks, you heard it from health coach Tip, you better find a way to incorporate some fruits and vegetables within your diet. <laughs> you better find yeah. a way. Yeah, I mean, well, well, first and foremost, the great part came because Listen, I am not talking at people. I am talking amongst you. Okay. Yes. Like I, 
have had to figure it out the hard way, figure it out the quiet way, the long way, whatever way. Like, what is that even like? I literally had to ask myself, what does that even mean to give myself grace? Because again, you know, I'm I'm very big on words and things catch my attention. And yeah, they sound great. That sounds nice. Oh, just give yourself grace. But no, real talk. How do I do that? Because if you've grown up in a culture, if you've grown up in a family where no one ever said that you could take a day off because that's called being lazy or no one even allowed you to be sick because it's just like, oh, just take some ginger ale and pray about it and you'll be OK. It's just like, well, you don't know <laughs> what giving yourself grace means. And so, you know, I've been in a season and I, to be honest, I still kind of am where I'm figuring that out. Like, oh, OK, oh, if I only got one to two maybe three things done today, whether they were on my personal list or my professional endeavors, that's good. And I'm about to go get some ice cream. Now, of course, for me, guys, I am vegan. It's going to be dairy free, but it's an indulgence. And yeah, I'm about to have it. Like, I'm going to eat the cake. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> And I'm going to enjoy it. And I'm not going to feel guilty or ashamed or anything about it. So um, absolutely. I love it. So the, the Holy Spirit fire is clearly rising in this conversation. <laughs> I absolutely love it. So to, to, with all the work you do in, within health coaching, you also mentioned uh, how you were called to the art. So as, as we touch on your, your multi-talents and, and you being in, in entertainment, the creative process, because I know we have creatives that listen to the podcast. Can you just talk about how you partner with God when it comes to creativity, especially with the arts and entertainment, because let's be honest, Tip, in an industry, uh, in, in entertainment, you start talking Hollywood and TV and, and movies, and all of a sudden that, that, that Jesus word gets a little, <laughs> a little, a little more lowercase than uppercase. So give us your experience and, and, and how you partner with God in, in an industry that quite frankly, doesn't see God the same way. Yeah. And, you know, this is this is different for everyone. So, yeah, that, okay. So let me, let me just preference this by saying that can be tough, right? Because I have friends in the industry on both sides, both believers and non-believers. Um, and so even amongst us that are created as believers, there is a, a difference of what I would call our um, our hard nose, you know what I mean? And that stuff like, you know, when we start getting into contracts and what we will and won't do, like if we'll do nudity, if we'll curse, if we'll play certain characters, um, you know, things like that. We don't always agree as Christian believers across the board. Um, so what I, what I do is I go in and I'm authentically me. And because God is in me, you'll see that either way. I don't have to be overly preachy. I don't have to come in saying I'm a woman of God and, you know, all this type of stuff. And I actually, you know, like how my mentor says it, she's like, yeah, I'm a woman of faith. I'm a woman of God, but I don't project that faith onto anyone. You'll naturally see it by talking to me. You'll naturally hear it. You know what I mean? And, and so that's how I kind of approach it. Now, in my quiet time, because I don't care what's going on in Hollywood or what premieres I may be at or parties or whatever, I still have to have a quiet time because that's how I know how to navigate my next steps. That's how I know what roles I should or shouldn't take. Um, that's how I'm going to find my worth so that when negotiations begin, I don't short myself. Um, that's also how I'm going to have an increased discernment to know who's who, because I'm in an industry where everybody is a fast talker and everybody is a somebody, you know what I mean? Let them tell it. At <laughs> <laughs> so I have to be able to hear what they're not saying. And the only way to do that is if I have my own quiet time to have increased discernment to know who I should be connected with in what season for what project and for how long. Um, so that's what I would say there. And in me being authentically me, that's naturally going to dictate my no's and my yeses. You know, what I will do, roles that I will take and things that I will or won't say while playing a role. Um, and then also it lets me know what type of audience I'm called to, right? So I know for a lot of faith-based creatives, well, I shouldn't say a lot, for some faith-based creatives, they'll only do Christian projects. That's not my lane. I know that I'm called to both, believers and non-believers. Um, and like I said, I'm, I'm very much in a way where I'm not overly preachy. I'm not a Bible thumper. 
Um, so I'm like the friend and Jason, you mentioned earlier, like, you know, being in the club and you tell the bouncer, hey, no one gets in here. Yeah, that's me. Like, I am that Christian girl. Yes, I go to church. You know, I, I was a whole small group leader for two years. And yes, I will still be in the club. And I don't feel any way about it because I know the God that's in me. I know the audience that I'm called to. And we're also called to be light to the darkness, not necessarily light to light. And I understand that. So I guess to sum it up, to answer that, that question is, first and foremost, I have my own relationship with God. And that naturally shines through no matter where I am, no matter what space or industry or building or event that I'm at, that's just naturally going to be there. Um, and so having increased discernment dictates my next moves, my next steps. Um, now, as far as getting down to what characters and things I play like that, that creative process is a little bit different. Again, I try to find in every character that I play, I try to find the truth in it. I try to find um, our similarities. And mainly, I just try to understand their mindset in that moment. I try to give an um, authentic portrayal to embody them so I can tell their story with the spirit of excellence and grace and truth. And the best way I can do that is to literally put myself in their shoes with what's been given to me in the script and play it without judgment, um, but just through their lens with how I think I, I would have felt or what they may have been feeling and how that would have looked like. Um, and, and again, I can only do that if I'm vulnerable with myself, with my own shortcomings, with my own, I'm not going to say weaknesses, but I like to call them areas of growth. Um, that's how I can be free to then portray somebody else's life. And again, all that comes from my own inner work when, like I said, when I'm not at the parties, when I'm not on the red carpets, when I'm not at the premieres, when I'm not in front of the camera, when I'm not on Clubhouse, when I'm not on somebody's podcast, when I'm not on a Zoom call with a client, it's the work that I'm doing, the inner work that people don't see on the screen, which is how I'm able to move freely from one energy from one industry to the next and when I am on the screen. So I hope that shed some light on that process. Tip, the building has been burned down. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> so in other words, folks, be bigger on the inside than you are on the outside. The world around you tells you to be bigger on the outside. The cars, the clothes, the ego, I'm the man or I'm that chick or... I got swag or I'm always going to everything that's lit or what. No, be bigger on the inside. And Tip is talking about she has personal growing relationship with Christ. And that's how she stays grounded. Well, Tip, I just, gosh, as we come to a close here, you've dropped so much wisdom tonight. And I know that people are really going to be blessed by uh, everything that you've said. Uh, on this episode of the podcast as we close out tip what would be a challenge what would you challenge uh, kingdom business owners christian business owners what would be your challenge to them to steward the gifts and talents that they've been called to because you're somebody that works in multiple capacities and i think about the parable of the talents in scripture so as we get ready to close, what would be the challenge that you issue to uh, our fellow brothers and sisters in the marketplace? Um, just that, un understanding exactly what you just said. I know a lot of your listeners, like you said, are, are kingdom business. I would challenge them to take the limits off of God by first understanding what ministry marketplace is. You know, I sat with another um, actor friend out here who is also a Christian, and, and we were talking, and he was saying that a lot of people kind of struggle with that who traditionally grew up in the church. So I, I did not, only because of my background, you know, I came to know, um, get baptized and fully flesh out my relationship with God later. So there's a lot of things that maybe people learn from a traditional setting in church that I did not have to unlearn, like they are kind of mm -hmm. seeing themselves do now. And one of those things is understanding ministry marketplace. So for me, the reason why I can be in certain, um, I guess, environments that some of the more seasoned saints may feel like you shouldn't be doing that is because I understand that wherever I am, 
if I am walking in what God has called me to do and I am fulfilling my purpose, that is my ministry. So if you are on your job, if you're still in corporate, that is a ministry. When I am on a set and I am portraying a character, that is my ministry. It doesn't have to be within the four walls of the church. And because that is my ministry, God, of course, is going to want to make sure that I am taken care of and blessed by that ministry. So it is okay that I get paid for doing that, for walking in my calling. Um, I just so I just want to task every kingdom business entrepreneur with that mindset of truly, truly understanding what ministry marketplace is and that wherever you are operating in your gifts, talents and abilities that God has given you fully walking out your purpose and embodying your calling, that is your ministry. I love it, too. We are marketplace ambassadors. I absolutely love it. Well, Tip, you've dropped a lot of wisdom. And by now, if they're anything like me, they're like, I've got to get this lady's contact information. How can I keep up with what she's doing? So, Tip, uh, if, if people were to follow up with you, what's the best way for them to, to contact you or reach out to you via social media? What would you, how would you guide or direct them to do so? Yeah, absolutely. So I would say the best thing to do is to follow me on my personal Instagram page. And that's just my name. It's T-I-P as in progress, L-Y-V as in victory, E-T-T-E as in every day, all day. Um, and yeah, you guys can just go over there. You can follow me. Let me know, you know, send me a DM. Let me know that you heard me on this podcast. Um, I got a lot of things that are what I believe are big things that are coming down the line. And I believe in um, sharing my journey, right? Because right now God kind of has me in like a transition space. And I know a lot of times people like to be like, oh, started from the bottom. Now I'm here. So I'm going I'm to show you what the top looks like. But now nah, with me, what you see is what you get. So if you want a front row seat to literally building things out and walking some of these things out in real time, absolutely follow me over there. Shoot me a DM. Let me know you heard me on Jericho podcast. Um, and even shoot me the word journey and I can add you to my email list. So you'll be the first one to know when I bring out new courses and new products and share new things from what I'm learning. And so again, that's just my name, Tip Levet, T-I-P-L-Y-V-E-T-T-E. I love it, Tip. And Tip, thank you so much. I know there's a lot of things that you could be doing, but I am so honored to have you, not just as my friend and my sister in Christ, but coming to lend your wisdom, experience, and your transparency and vulnerability here on the Jericho Force podcast. So thank you so much for coming tonight. I appreciate well, it. Absolutely. And thank you so much for having me. You know, I, it was always going to be a yes for you. So <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. I'm just honored you thought highly enough of me to speak to your listeners. I definitely hope it was valuable for them. Yes. Love it. Love it. Well, folks, that wraps up another episode of the Jericho Force podcast. Remember, don't conform to the world's way of doing business. Transform by doing business God's way. This is Mr. Fortify signing off. We'll see you next time. Thank you for listening to the Jericho Force podcast. You can catch us live on Wednesdays at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time and on demand. Check out JerichoForce.com backslash podcast for more details. To learn how to live out your faith in the marketplace, grab a copy of Jason Davis's book, Fortify, Being Rooted in God's Plan for Work and Business, available on Amazon.